As mentioned in my introduction to FPV, one of my very first videos, having the return to home function available on your craft is a real lifesaver. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time talking around how the GPS return to home features work, particularly on quadcopters we're talking about here, things with multi-wee. And in the next 10-15 minutes, what we're going to talk around are really four or five things. First, we'll talk about the multi-wee itself and we'll actually talk about what the elements and the hardware that you need, specifically the GPS and the I2C board. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details in here, but I'm going to direct you to another one of my videos that show you how to set that stuff up. Second thing we're going to talk about is the code that you actually need to change on the multi wee board so that the GPS bits and pieces burst into life, so you can use both the GPS hold and the GPS home features. Then we'll have a look at the setup in multi wee conf so you know what you have to do so that when you flick that switch on the transmitter the model knows it either has to stay where it is or better come back to you safely. And finally we'll put a quick video on here of it actually working at one of my local fields. But before we get into that level of detail let's run through a quick diagram to show you what this thing actually does and how it works in practice. The first thing you have to remember is that when before you do anything with any of the GPS enabled features you have to wait for the model to get a GPS lock. Now on a multi wee board that I'm using here the way that's indicated is the I2C board flashes three times which means it has a 3D GPS lock and the 3D lock means it knows its latitude, its longitude and also its altitude i.e. how high it is. It has to have that lock before you can fly the craft and use any of the GPS bits and bobs. What I then do is walk about a dozen 15 paces in front of me, place the model on the ground and then go back to my initial position and then arm the board. When you arm the board, that then sets the home position and those GPS coordinates are stored in the board as where it needs to go back to if you flick the switch for GPS home. Then you can just fly as normal and you can fly all the way down the field and then when you're ready or you need it, you can flick the switch on the transmitter and activate the return to home function. What then happens is the model very quickly stops pauses and then rotates in the air so it's facing back towards you and the return to home position and then dips its nose and very gently makes its way back down the field until it gets over the position it stored as home and then it turns back so that it's facing back down the field i.e. the way that it was when you stored the home position and then it'll just float above that position until you take back control. Now that is a really great feature if you get into trouble and it's weird watching the model fly itself down the field. So now we've talked about what we're going to discuss, we've had a quick look at a diagram of what you can expect, let's get into some of the nit nitty gritty and talk about the pieces. First thing we'll talk about is the GPS unit. Now the GPS unit here is on this model has to be mounted as far away from any electromagnetic interference as you can and with a clear view of the sky. The trick is also to make sure that the compass that's on the multi wee board is rock steady as well. Uh, there's another video that you can go and have a look at that explains why that is. But on this model what I've actually done is put a shield underneath both the multi wee and the GPS unit here under the top plate and that blocks any of the electromagnetic interference that was coming from the power lines actually in the body of the craft. Now this is actually made from something called Mu Metal, M-U Metal. It's used around high magnetic fields and in the backs of things like old cathode ray tubes. It's very um, attractive to magnetic fields so it will actually short circuit a magnetic field through itself and vastly reduce the interference on the far side. 
I needed this plate in this model to get GPS functions working perfectly. When I tried it without the moon metal and the separation, I found that I had problems with a compass getting interference and that meant it just simply didn't work. The other thing you need, of course, is the I2C unit, and that's the one that when we see it flashing three times, tells us that we have that 3D GPS lock that we need before we arm the board and start flying. Second thing we need to talk about is the code. There are a couple of places, and I'm highlighting them here, where you need to go into to change the code to make sure that it works. I'm actually going to link here to the video that you need to have a look at that talks you through in detail how to do it. But you can see here that there's specific areas in the code that dictate how large the GPS radiuses are, the maximum speed in the GPS functions and other bits and bobs. I've not changed any of this from standard in the code and I suggest until you've had a chance to play with it, you don't either. The next thing we'll talk about is the actual setup. So here we are in MultiWeConf. I'm actually looking at my model here. There are two buttons that you actually click in to select either GPS hold or GPS home. GPS hold will keep the model in one position as best it can and it will wander around the sky around that central point, those GPS coordinates that you put in. GPS home is the one where it will actually fly back to you. Now interestingly, even though you don't, haven't selected the barometer and things like the, um, the compass or the magnetometer, it will still use those to maintain height and use bearing for the GPS functions. So whether you have them turned on or turned off, as soon as you've selected one of the GPS uh, bits and pieces, those are being used by the code to maintain its position in the sky. So what you need to do is make sure that for one of the positions on your control system, on your transmitter, it absolutely um, selects one of these bits and pieces. Now the way it works for me, I have a three position switch which gives me the flight modes. My bottom one is normal flying around, regular stuff. Middle one is GPS hold so I can get into a position in the sky if I'm doing something like a follow cam for another um, aircraft and that will keep me um, where I need to be until the craft is in the air and I can then follow it. And then the very top one is GPS home. The reason I've done it that way is that when I get into trouble I can just flick that switch as hard as I can until that top position. I'm not having to try and feel for a middle position or whatever. I can just push it as hard as I can towards me, drop it into that top position, and then I have got my get out of jail free card running for me. Final thing then, let's go to the field and actually see this in action. So here we are, it's my trusty FPV ship, it's the cheap and cheerful quad that I'm flying around a lot with at the moment um, because I don't mind bending it, it hasn't got all of the expensive electronics on it like an easy OSD. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll actually put it on the ground, wait for those three flashes. Now we've got that. We'll walk back. Arm the board. And take off. And here we are flying down the field. We've got the onboard cam running here to the side. And we are going to put the return to home on right about now. So as you can see, we're slowing. We're turning. We're not pointing directly back to the start position, it's slightly off, but it's heading back under its own steam to where we lift it off. We're now at the home position and we're turning. And now I've taken control back of the craft to fly it back out down the field again. And we are going to put the return to home on. And 
and here we are just approaching the home position we're now at the home position and we're turning so there you are you can see now that it's quite straightforward all you have to do is make sure that you watch these videos that uh, so these links at the bottom you first of all need to watch the GPS and I2C to show you how to set it up the second one you need to have a look at is around the compass and those bits and pieces the third one then you need to just be aware of is to make sure that you have um, a nice open field for the first couple of times you test this because it won't come straight back to you on a line like a laser beam it will wander around um, scary first couple of times you flick that switch and it behaves that way but that's perfectly normal and going back to GPS hold you may see videos with things like the NASA and some very expensive flight controllers where they appear to sit in the air and don't move you will struggle to get that with a multi wee board it will wander around a specific position so rather than try and use it for aerial photography where you're trying to lock the model off in a particular position so you can use a gimbal to look around it's more of a being able to put the model in a position in the sky and give yourself a bit of breathing room before you carry on the flight so hopefully that's interesting for those of you who are looking at GPS Home. I strongly recommend that whenever you're doing this, double check everything, make sure the code's working, make sure you have a GPS lock before you start flying, make sure you have no electromagnetic interference on your compass, getting yourself in a big field, cross your fingers and give it a go. I'm glad I did. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe and my help out channel is available if some of this you need to talk to me about. Happy flying!